listening to The Real Men of Real Estate. This is your host, Thomas Forge Bell Jr. And now we have our special guest here ready to go, uh, Mr. Michael McCow. Uh, welcome to the show, sir. Thank you. How are you? Good I'm doing wonderful you, yourself. Thank you for joining us. I really appreciate it. Uh, want to get started on, um, uh, get right into it basically because of the time and whatnot. So, uh, tell me a little bit about yourself, and then we start going to the Q and A part. Sure. Uh, so I'm the founder and CEO of Stratton Equities, <clears throat> We're a nationwide private money and um, hard money lender. Uh, we, we lend in 43 states at this time. Uh, very wide range of mortgage programs, and we specialize in investment financing. Okay, great. So, what about your new investors and how they are getting started? Um, we work with new investors as well. Um, you know, we have extremely highly trained loan officers, so that helps. Um, you know, the big thing with us is we don't sugarcoat anything. You know, it 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 fits or it doesn't fit. Um, so, unlike a lot of other companies, you know, not to name names, they might drag you through. With us, our loan officers are trained in the first 10, 15 seconds to know if if the deal might fit, if it qualifies, it doesn't qualify. Um, you know, we have an extremely high conversion ratio on what gets submitted. Um, so we're definitely um, um, there and equipped to help new and seasoned investors. Okay, sounds great. So what makes your business different from other real estate uh, lenders? I mean, a big thing is the programs. You know, I mean, I'm very proud of our programs. I've, I've created and structured a lot of our programs. We're actually going to be adding more programs um, March and April. Um, you know, people boast about rates, but we truly do have phenomenal rates. We have higher LTVs. You know, if you're a real estate investor, you should be much more concerned with the LTVs and the programs and the rates. You know, I bought my first house at 20, 19 years old, and my rate was 24%. Uh, that's before you had institutionalized hard money or private money the way that we do now. Um so, you know, I, I, you know, even though people are very rate, rate conscious, you really focus on the program, being able to secure financing and higher LTVs, because generally most new investors don't have enough capital. So by putting down less money, obviously it, 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 it enables you to do more deals because you're putting down less money with higher LTVs. Okay. Now, could you do me a favor and elaborate a little bit more for some, some people that are brand new to this industry and are looking to get started? Uh, what would they need to do? What would they need to have? Um, what what would make them want to feel like your your company would be the best company to come to? I mean, I'll give you a great example. One of my one of my friends, his son wanted to buy a, he was 24 years old, wanted to buy a two family house down the Jersey Shore. And, you know, he went through traditional, you know, big banks and big mortgage companies, which show for people that are new, regular mortgages, which are called agency, which is also called QM. QM stands for qualified mortgage. So in the QM world, due to the heavy regulation, a one to four family investment properties max generally at 70 LTV. So, you know, they, you know, what people think they go to some, you know, very big bank or some very big lender that it's going to be better for them, which is not the case. So that company offered them 70%. So you got 30% down, then you have your reserves, right? Then you're going to have closing costs. So you're talking about a, a significant amount of money, especially a property, you know, here on the East Coast. So the, the, I, as I said, I'm friends with the father. This is last summer. They came to me and we, we did the loan for the son and it was 85% financing. Now, granted, the son had a great credit score and everything was beautiful, but it was 85% financing. So if you're a new investor, uh, and most inv new investors, obviously, you know, because they're new, they have they don't have, they don't have an, a, a, as much capital. Um, but it's obviously significantly better to put 15% down than to put obviously 30% down when you're a new investor. Okay, so do me a favor, explain LTV for those who might not understand what, what the word means. Loan to value. So mortgages are based on loan to values. So LTV is loan to value. So how much of the purchase price and how much you're putting down. So if you have a $100,000 home for argument's sake, and somebody's going to lend you 85% LTV, so you're putting down 15% because the, the lender is going to lend you 85%. If they're going to lend you 70%, then you're putting down 30%. But one thing about a lot of new investors is, I, is, I mean, I personally haven't done haven't done a loan in some time because I, I, I don't do sales anymore. 
but they, they don't seem to realize where they need money, right? That like when they do their calculations in their head or on paper, they don't understand where they need monies. Um, I'll give you an example on a fix and flip or a rehab loan. You generally, like with our program or most programs generally work kind of the same. You're gonna need money in four places, right? You're gonna need a down payment. Um, and you know, people, actually, you know, let's back up a little bit talking about new investors. Um, you, you know how you always see advertisements, right? For like lenders. And yes. then generally, like when you see a car advertisement, people offer like, you know, the best deal at the lowest rates and they kind of put it together in their head. So when you see an advertisement and I see it all the time, showing like 90 LTV and then it shows like the lowest rate, that's the advertisement stating it can go up to 90 LTV and their rates start at X. For some odd reason, people put those two things together and they think you're going to get the highest LTV at the lowest rate and that's, that's not how it works. So obviously the higher, the higher your loan to value goes, the higher your rates are going to go. Um, so when you're doing like a rehab loan or a fix and flip loan, you generally need money into four places. So your down payment, and if you're a new investor, most likely you're not going to get the max LTV that, that they offer because generally higher LTVs come with more experience that you've done three, four, five deals. You're going to need your down payment money. So call it 20%. You're going to need reserves, right? So your reserves are after, let's say the loan is said and done. And for easy math sake, your payment's $1,000, let's just say. Pre-COVID, we generally needed like three, three months reserves. So that's three months. So after the deal is done, you're going to need about three months of mortgage payments in the bank. Now with COVID, a lot of lenders, including us, we have some programs that are six months. We have some programs that require nine months because God forbid, you know, what when these regulations and guidelines came in place was two years ago when people weren't paying rent. So if you got into a new investment property, you know, the, the, the bank, the lender wanted to make sure that you had enough money in the bank in case your tenant didn't pay rent for six months, you have enough money to obviously cover the mortgage payment. So you're going to need to you have your reserves. Then you need to have your closing costs, uh, which are whatever percent, you know, you know, generally in a fix and flip, they're higher than in a term loan. So you generally, you know, whatever it is, depending, you know, three, four percent, you'll get closing costs, depending on title, escrow, sometimes even more. And then the big thing they don't realize is, is draws. So most programs are similar. Some programs work a little different, but like with our program, let's say you have a hundred thousand dollar rehab budget. You break it up into draws. You can break it up into five jobs. So you, you divide obviously that hundred thousand by five. You can do it in, into two. Most people break it up into five to 10. So if you broke it up into 10, that's a lot of work. That, that's 10 draws. So you have to do the first so work, right? I'll just say $20,000 worth of work. Then it's a draw. The money gets reimbursed to you. But when people see advertisements that argument's sake say 100% of the rehab, in their mind, they assume I'm just going to get 100% of my rehab in, in one shot. And unfortunately, that's not how it works you get the money reimbursed to you. It's a draw. So again, if you have a $100,000 rehab budget, you're going to divide it in, let's say, five draws. You're going to do the first $20,000 out of your pocket. Then you, you, you reach the draw team, you email them or call them, an appraiser comes out, make sure that everything is done to code and everything is done correctly. Then you get reimbursed again and keep being reimbursed till the 100000 is done. So in a rehab loan, you generally need money in, in four places. Okay, so let's say, for instance, a newbie, as they call themselves, a new investor that's never done a deal, but they found a JV partner. How would that work for them in, 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 in this industry? Well, the same thing. I mean, you know, the, the, the main partner who's going to be the, the, the person that's done more deals, and that's generally how it works with a JV partner, is the JV partner has done – more deals because what people don't have to realize, I mean, again, I'm talking about our programs, but most of them are generally structured kind of the same. It's how many deals have you or your, your LLC that you own been on the HUD for the past 36 months. So, and then you get people that say, well, I did this, and I did that. If you're not on the HUD, it doesn't count. So we can't verify if you were a part of a deal, you know, three years ago. Right. The only way you can verify it is if you're on the HUD. So you're on the closing statement, you secured financing, 
in the past 36 months for X amount of deals. That's either a purchase or refinance or properties you own. Um, that's what counts as, as experience. So generally somebody who's new doesn't have the experience. Um, you would JV with somebody that does have the experience, but then you would be on the LLC. So generally you would form a new LLC, right? Joint with the person who has the experience. And now call it ABC LLC, you start to do deals with this other partner. And now after three, four deals, you are attached to three, four properties that you, you've done. Your LLC is attached to three, four properties that you've done. Hopefully now you have, we've had profitable deals and now you have more money in the bank. And then after, you know, three, four deals you've learned and now you can kind of go on your own. Okay. Cause see, I have a real estate investment club, which is called black in the inland empire real estate investment club. And I come across all different types of people um, in the industry. And one of the main things that a lot of newbies ask is that they sit back and watch these ATD programs and they say, well, um, they don't get it. I want you to answer that when we come back from commercial break. So ladies and gentlemen, we will be back with Michael. Thank you. This is the real men of real estate.